Okay, uh, we are going to explain um, different types of noise. Actually, now uh, the noise that uh, we can have in our system, in our devices. Uh, the first one, which is so common, is a thermal noise, thermal agitation of charge carriers, t typically uh, for electrons in a conductor. So uh, you can imagine that the uh, carriers, uh, the charge carriers are uh, trying, starting. Uh, they they start to move because of uh, you know uh, thermal agitation, and uh, so this kind of random movement increases with the you know temperature. So uh, we are expecting to have a noise because they they don't want to go in a you know, regular way, in a specific way. So maybe we have our current in this way, and these random movements will you know affect our current, and we have you know we have noise. The second one is a shot noise, and this form of noise that arises from the time-dependent fluctuation in electrical current. So uh, this this noise noise originates from the discrete nature. So it's in the nature of charge to have a random movement and fluctuation. The second, the third one is really important: the phase noise, and we are going to talk about it in upcoming seasons. And uh, we can explain it. I can explain it. Uh, Briefly here, imagine that we have the uh, we have a signal here, this black one, and here if we have a phase noise, we will have phase variations. As you see, the phase here uh, changes all the time, and it, it this is called uh, the phase noise. And actually, phase noise uh, call uh, it appears in the form of phase jitter. So what is the phase jitter? It's the same like that. For example, imagine we have a pulse. This is our pulse, and uh, uh, this is this is a jitter. For example, it happens here. the The falling edge happens here, so we are expecting to have the falling edge in T1, but it happens in T2. So this is the phase jitter, uh, and uh, it's one of the you know, uh, one of the uh, things that happen because of the phase noise. So basically, here it causes a problem for us because we want to have our falling edge in T1, but we have jitter and uh, it's kind of a noise here and it corrupts our signal the next one is a flicker noise a uh, flicker noise uh, occurs in virtually all electric components and the most important is the flicker noise is proportional to the inverse of frequency as you see here the thing is that yeah flicker noise changes with frequency so basically it's proportional to uh, 1 over f that's why we call it 1 over f actually frequency and uh, it's just only for low frequency uh, region. We don't have flicker noise in high frequency the, uh, region because after that uh, we will only have a thermal and shot noise here in high frequency. I if you go to high frequency, we will have a thermal noise and shot noise. And thermal o noise is uh, proportional to the you know uh, T. It's pr proportional to the the uh, he, uh, you know uh, temperature. Let's say. Uh, so we know here that generally this is the basic thing that we should know about the noise. We have a we have a corner frequency here, as you see. We have a, we have a corner frequency, and before this cor corner frequency, we have flicker noise, which changes with which changes with frequency. And after this, when we go to high frequency, we only have a thermal and shot noise. The avalanche, the, the, that thing that we have here is avalanche noise, is a form of noise that occurs in PN junctions that operate in a region at uh, or close to the point of avalanche breakdown, which is not our you know, topic of interest here, so I just wanted to mention. Here I want to talk about the signal to noise ratio because uh, it's one of the important topics that we have to know in uh, RF design which is called SNR, is a measure that used in science and engineering that compares the level of desired signal to the level of background noise. So uh, SNR is basically the power of noise to the po power of signal to the power of noise. Imagine that we have a signal with a uh, smaller amplitude and we have a signal which, ha with, uh, which uh, has a high amplitude. And we combine this with the noise, which is c uh, the noise is the same for both of it. So here we have SNR1 and here we have SNR2. So we expect that our SNR2 uh, to be higher than SNR1 uh, 
because why because our signal power is higher than uh, is higher in the second case so this is called SNR and it's very important because in the system we compare this you know and there is a uh, specific level for SNR that we have to accept they say that for example for this system the SNR should be higher than this in order to be acceptable for our system basically it shows kind of data error level the SNR here if you, obviously if you have a very small signal the signal will be affected so much by the noise as we want we always have to want to have the high SNR just uh, notice it's obviously we want to e decrease the P of noise which is sometimes we can't do it because you know noise is always there so if we can't change the P noise why not we can change the signal power we can increase the signal power in order to have high SNR and also we have SNR in a, uh, in a logarithmic you know domain and we can say that the SNR actually SNR dB is 10 log log 10 the SNR itself and we show it with the dB here and this is this is our SNR I would like to make some make an uh, example for you here uh, let's say we have a, a signal power of uh, uh, 1 milliwatt here and uh, we have a noise power of 0 0.1 milliwatt you want to calculate our SNR so we said our SNR is signal to noise ratio so uh, P signal uh, P noise so it should be 1 milliwatt over milliwatt then it's 10 and if we want to show it in a dB so it's 10 log in a 10 SNR so this is a SNR dB yeah which equals to uh, if this is 10 then this is 1 and again we have 10 dB so basically we can say that yes if if this is a DB domain actually it's DBM here we will explain what is DBM uh, in upcoming uh, courses so don't worry about DBM just assume that this is now a DB and uh, okay this is our power 1 milliwatt and actually because this is DB so we can say the power is a uh, sorry it should be uh, 10 uh, log 10 milliwatt and this is a uh, this the power here is 10 log uh, 0 0.1 milliwatt and the difference between this is our SNR so this is our noise floor and this is our signal power this is power here this is P and uh, the difference between this shows our SNR in dB but if you want to uh, calculate the SNR we have to divide them thank you for watching our video please don't forget to subscribe you can learn about this topic and more using our website the complete course on this topic is provided on our website at www.rasoft.com RASOFT is providing a complete certificate on radio frequency. The RF basic concepts and fundamentals course is provided free at our website. The courses are complete step-by-step -step approach with quiz and examples and certificate of completion will be provided upon finishing each course. By taking the required courses in RF system and IC design with pass status, RASOFT would provide the RASOFT radio frequency certificate. The topics are chosen with advice from RF engineers in top industry companies like Apple, Qualcomm, Broadcom and Skyworks who are missing candidates with these skills.